So today is going to be a fun one. Now, if you're like me and you've started using Nextcloud, you like it. You might even love it. Uh, and it was easy enough if you followed my other video to get it set up to your internal network. But it took me probably three weeks of digging and troubleshooting to figure this out, so I'm hoping I can save you guys some time. My Nextcloud instance is now 100% accessible from the internet, and most importantly, I'm getting this connection is secure. So if you want to find out how to do that, follow along. Okay, so the, the way that I found to make this work was to just do everything through Cloudflare. Now you can go and, and transfer domains from GoDaddy or anywhere else into Cloudflare, uh, but just purchasing my domain name for a whopping $6.99 and doing it right from Cloudflare's page itself, everything was flawless and easy, so that's what I chose to do. Um, you can handle that on your own. Once you go to Cloudflare, you've got a registered domain. It'll show up here. If you can see, I've got mine grayed out, but it says active. Um, that's where we're going to kind of start this tutorial. So just do the, the simple walkthroughs on their page. Register a domain. Again, mine was super cheap. Uh, less than seven dollars a year um, but you can buy whatever domain name that you want and get that registered up the next thing you need to do is go over here on the left hand side where it says zero trust and you're gonna need to sign up for that so they've got all sorts of plans the free plan is more than adequate for what we are doing so you'll click zero trust it'll bring you through a couple of screens as well you'll sign up for the free plan you'll go to check out your free plan uh, and then when you click on it, you'll be greeted with a screen like this. From here, you're going to go to Networks and then Tunnels. You're then going to select a Cloud Flared Tunnel. And there's a Next button in the bottom right that you can't see because my face is in the way, but you're going to click Next. You're then going to name that tunnel. So name it whatever you want, TrueNAS Scale Tunnel, TrueNAS Tunnel, whatever. Uh, this is just kind of an internal thing just so you can remember it. And again, a blue button on the right hand side here that says Save Tunnel. Once you do that, you're going to be confronted with a bunch of options at the top here. Uh, if this is a Windows install, a Mac install, Debian, Red Hat, just click on Docker. Uh, they're all going to have the same token in them, uh, but the Docker one has the, less, the least extra bloat text in there. Uh, so you see where this arrow is? After it says token, there's going to be a super long key and only the first couple characters of it here are visible. You'll hit this copy button, and then what you gotta do is you gotta paste that in WordPad, Notepad, and anything like that. And you're just gonna wanna extract just that token piece of it, because we need that for the next step. Now we'll bounce back over to our TrueNAS box. And now that we are in our TrueNAS box, we will go to Discover Apps. We'll search for an app called Cloudflare. I've already got it in here and running. Um, you'll hit Edit, or when you're doing the main install, doesn't matter. The only thing that you need to do is paste in that extremely long tunnel token. So once that tunnel token is in there, you go to the bottom, you hit Update or Save if it's the first time you're installing it, and that thing will go up and running. Now when you go back to your Tunnels tab under Networks, you're going to see it has, here's my TrueNAS scale tunnel name. It's a cloud flared connection. It has a really long connector ID, a really long tunnel ID, and then the route of the domain name that I registered it to. And once it actually gets connected, it will say healthy instead of inactive here. So as long as that says healthy, that means you are ready to go to the next step. Now, let me move my face a little bit. So there's a little kebab menu on the right hand side here. If you click that kebab menu and then configure, that'll get us to the next screen. So we're still under tunnels and we're now configuring. It's going to bring you by default to the overview tab up here. You've got to bounce right over to the next one over, which is public host name. So this is the host name of where you want to be able to type into your web browser. So 
I have my overseer instance linked. So my internal port is 192.168.29.30 because that is the IP address of my TrueNAS box and Overseer runs on port 5055. So that's my internal service and I have that going to request dot and then my domain name that I have registered. And that worked beautifully right out of the box. Once that tunnel was connected, no configuration required. Next Cloud was a totally different story and a complete pain in the butt. Um, so that's why I'm doing this video and hopefully it'll save you guys a little bit of time. So you're going to go to add a public host name. I named mine cloud dot and then the domain name that I have registered. Again, this will just be a drop down. For the service type, you're going to do HTTPS for secure and then you're going to type in whatever your internal IP is for your TrueNAS instance. So again, mine is 192.168.29.30 and NextCloud runs on port 9001. So that's why that's there. You then have to click additional application settings, go to TLS, and make sure that no TLS verify is enabled. It, it's probably disabled by default, so make sure you check that box. From there, you can hit the top left Cloudflare icon that'll bring you back to your main menu. And you'll see you're greeted again with your domain name that you just registered a couple moments ago. So we will click on that and that'll bring us into the settings for this particular domain. So if you've got five domains, this is how you get into to each individual one. Once you're in the one that you just registered, go to SSL, TLS, Overview and just ensure that you are on full end-to-end -end encryption. So just tick that box, mm -hmm. hit save. Oh, again, my face is in the way. Let me move my face, not the whole screen. And you want it to say full down there. So make sure that you're on, on full uh, and then save and move on. Now, Cloudflare Secure Certificates. This is the next key to the puzzle. So this is going to help get you that nag screen off of there that says this page is not secure. Uh, so doing this is a couple extra minutes. Totally worth it though. It makes it look much more professional, especially if you are sharing this with friends or family and they're going to be uploading pictures or anything like that. It just makes people feel more secure when you don't have that little nag screen up on the top. So. To do that, there is one prerequisite. You need to have an email address for your root user, uh, and depending on how you have it set up, your admin user, just do both while you're in here. So you're gonna go on your main TrueNAS menu, credentials, local users. You can then search up in the top, or root is always gonna be the very first one because it's the user ID of zero. Click it and then edit and just make sure you've got a registered email address in there otherwise it will not let you do the certificate part so do that for your root and your admin so you might have to search for admin because i think that gives you a uid of 900 something um, so do that for both just enter in an email for both of them and then we can go to the next part so once that's saved go back to credentials and then certificates when you click on certificates you're going to have this screen, which has these four quadrants here. And oddly enough, um, you're going to need to start in the bottom right quadrant and then work your way up and around uh, counterclockwise. So we're going to start with the Acme DNS authenticators and we're going to click add. That's going to give us this pop up. Just name it Cloudflare. And then from the drop down list, you're going to select Cloudflare. Enter the email address that you used to register your domain name. And this is important because this is essentially your login to get the authentication um, certificate at the end. So that Cloudflare email that you used to log in. And then the only other thing you need is an API key. So to get that, we've got to go back to our web browser, go to Cloudflare, click this little guy in the top right corner here and select my profile. Once you do that, select API tokens on the left hand side. That'll bring you into this screen. So you'll see that there are API tokens and API keys. Tokens you can limit to just very finite access. 
The keys will essentially give it access to everything in your Cloudflare. And honestly, I see zero risk in that for this particular instance. So the easiest way for me is to do the global API key. You'll click view. It'll make you do a two-factor authentication and then it will show you that key. You can hit copy and then you can paste it back into this API key region. You'll select save. And then it'll show up down here. It'll say Cloudflare in your Acme DNS authenticators. The next step we need to do is counterclockwise up to this top right block, the certificate signing requests. So you'll click add. And then there's five steps in this. The first one is just to name it. So I named mine cert. That's all you need to do. And then you hit next. Under step two, you don't change a thing, you just click Next. Under step three, you're going to have to enter your state. So I'm in Pennsylvania, I'm in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, and my organization is Home Lab. So you'll need to enter your email address one last time, and then the subject alternative name. This is where you will type in your domain name that you just registered. So do an asterisk, dot, and then your domain. And that'll essentially open up to any subdomains that you have. So I named mine cloud dot, and then the domain name. Um, I have the other one, which is request dot, and then the domain name that I registered. So your domain name will go here. And again, just put an asterisk in front of it and that will open it up to any subdomains that you create, the certificate will be valid for. You'll hit next, that'll bring you up to four extra constraints, leave as next, and then five is just confirming your options, it's essentially just a, a summary screen, you'll hit save, and boom, you will magically have a certificate signing request in this top right block. Now. To get certificates to show up in this top left block, weirdly enough, you've got to go to the top right block and you've got to hit this wrench icon. So this wrench icon, once you click on that, it will pop up and it essentially uses that CSA to create a certificate. So you name your certificate, whatever you want to call it. If you want to call it certificate four and then your domain name whatever or if you just want to call it cert one cert two cert 75 whatever you name it you click yes i agree to the terms of service there and then you from this drop down let's encrypt production directory so make sure you change that to production now it'll list your uh, domain and your dns right here just under both of these drop downs you're just going to select cloudflare then you're going to hit save and magically your new cert will pop up on the top left here so you see i mean by cert external and it'll list your domain name that you have under the cn with the asterisk in front of it and then also your dns uh, with the asterisk in front of it so once you've got that out of the way now we've got the cert actually in TrueNAS. now we've just got to start using it so in order to do that, you've got to go to System Settings and then General. Under General, there's this graphic user interface or this GUI section. If you hit Settings on the top right, it'll pop up. Let me move my face out of the way again. It'll pop up and the GUI, you see it says GUI SSL Certificate and you just select the one that you just created. Mine is named CERT, so nothing crazy there. And then all that's left is to reconfigure NextCloud. So if you followed my previous video and you've already got NextCloud up and running, awesome. If not, go visit that now. I'll see if I can figure out how to put a little square up here somewhere, somewhere. Uh, so that you can follow that video. It's a perfect pausing point because now it's time to actually install or reconfigure NextCloud for the first time. So, so we're going to go to apps and then we're going to find our NextCloud instance that we've already got running. 
and we are going to go to edit. So once we click that edit button, there's only a couple of things that we need to change. So originally when we had this up and running in our host region up here, we had our IP address of our TrueNAS server. You need to blank that out. Don't ask me why, it makes absolutely no sense to me. So you're going to blank that out. And then there's a section that says additional environment variables. You need to click add. Then you're going to type in overwrite CLI URL in all capital letters. And you're going to type the value of whatever your tunnel destination is. So mine is cloud dot and then my don domain name. You're going to do the same exact thing again. You're going to click add. A second one's going to pop up. You're going to type in overwrite host and then you're going to type the same thing cloud dot whatever your domain is that you registered. Now what this does is it stops Cloudflare from Essentially, when I first started doing this, I'd type in cloud dot my domain, and as long as I was on my internal network, it was forwarding back to the original host path of my internal IP address, which is fine when I'm in my house, but it wasn't working fine when I'm not on my home Wi-Fi or my home network that this NAS is connected to. So these steps will allow it to actually force it to use the tunnel that we just created so that no matter where you are in the world it will connect to it properly. So the last bit there is a network configuration make sure that it's on port 9001 which it should be but then you can also select that certificate that we just created and this is important again for not getting those SSL or site secure errors or warnings that pop up. So. Here's a final screenshot of cloud.mydomain. Connection is secure, and if you click on that, connection is secure, certificate is valid, uh, and everything works as it should. It's really those, those couple of little steps uh, with adding those overwrite CLI URL and overwrite host that really prevented this from working and caused me a lot of troubleshooting. I do want to thank the TrueNAS community forum. Uh, there was a couple members on there that found this problem. Uh, it was just in a, a buried and locked thread, so it took uh, a while of digging to actually find it. And I couldn't find anybody else on YouTube that could actually explain this the right way. Currently, 2024, happy 4th of July. I hope this helps some of you, most of you, all of you, have fun. Don't worry about the electric eel updates. There's going to be a rollout plan. Get your stuff working now. It could be months or years before you're forced to do that. Get it working now. Quit making excuses. Get it up and running. It is so much fun. God bless. Take care. Like and subscribe for more.